I want to welcome everyone tonight to the final webinar in our Future of Work series. Tonight, we have the great privilege of having Sam Hostvet with us, uh, who is a GA alum class of, Heather, remind me, 2003? Three. Oh, three. 2003. Um, he's going to be talking about the current industrial revolution. His company focuses on robotics and AI in the automation industry. And I'm going to turn it over to Heather quickly to give Sam a more formal introduction. I'm going to remind you all that there's a Q&A at the bottom of the Zoom window. So if you have some questions, you can pop them in there and we'll take them as they come in. Um, after Sam uh, finishes up his formal comments for the night. So thanks for joining us. Um, on Monday, we're gonna push out to the whole community, uh, all of the web links, uh, webinar links from this week, along with some pictures and information from Life After GA panels tomorrow. So make sure you keep an eye out for that, Heather. Okay, great. Uh, tonight we welcome Sam Hosvet, uh, GA class of 2003, as Gabby just said, uh, as the final featured alumnus in this year's Future of Work webinar series. Sam is the president of Automation Distribution Inc. and MCDI Automation. Uh, both companies are based in Hatfield, Pennsylvania and founded by his father in 1977. Sam started at GA as a sixth grader in 1998. As he made his way around the quad into the upper school, he was a swimmer captaining the team his senior year, and he also played water polo. Also in his senior year, he won the Upper School Sculpture Prize. I'm curious, I'm anxious to hear more about the sculpture. We haven't had a chance to chat. Uh, so we'll have to hear about that some other time. After GA, Sam attended Bates College where he continued to swim and majored in Chinese. He attended the Capital University in Economics and Business in 2006, and then graduated from Bates with a Bachelor of Arts in 2007. In 2010, Sam earned his Master's of Business Administration from Drexel University's LeBeau College of Business. Sam has been at the helm of the two businesses since 2015, and he'll talk more about the path, that path with us. Uh, they are automation solutions providers specializing in collaborative robotics, pneumatics, electrical control, and motion control products. Um, and their goal is finding technical as well as cost-efficient solutions to customers' automation design goals. Uh, to talk about his work, his company, and the future of automation and robotics as workplace solutions is Sam Hosvet. Thanks for joining us, Sam. Thanks for joining, Sam. Pleasure. All right, so I'll just uh, jump in here. So I uh, graduated in 2003 uh, from GA. Um, honestly, I had no idea what I wanted to, you know, get into from a career standpoint. Uh, I knew I wanted to, you know, own a business someday, but I didn't know what that was, you know, what it looked like, what products it sold. Um, and I uh, went to uh, Bates College, um, liberal arts, you know, education, uh, majored in uh, Chinese language. Um, you know, that was uh, kind of on a kind of on a whim. China was kind of a hot topic at the time. I uh, figured I'd, you know, give it a shot. Uh, you know, it turned out to be pretty good at it. Um, so I stuck with it. And uh, I got a chance to live over in Beijing for a, for a year during a pretty interesting time, you know, as China was opening up mm -hmm. <laughs> at the time. Uh, it's kind of going the opposite direction these days, unfortunately. Um, graduated in 07 uh, and then uh, went to go work for a company called uh, SMC Corporation. Uh, which was a uh, multi-billion dollar Japanese uh, manufacturer of uh, industrial automation products. Mm. Um, the idea, you know, for me essentially at the time was, um, you know, I wanted to get back over to China, you know, wanted to live over there, uh, you know, work over there. Um, so, you know, going to work for SMC, you know, kind of, you know, I, I could see a path for that with them. You know, they didn't have a path for me for that. But I saw how I could potentially, you know, work my way into, you know, yeah. what I was trying to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, they were a Japanese company, but they had a tremendous amount of manufacturing uh, over in China, uh, you know, at the time, and, and they still do. Um, I quickly actually got into a potential role, you know, with them. Um, you know, I, uh, I was working locally as a, as a sales uh, salesperson at the time for them. I uh, got into a application uh, where uh, the company was bought by private equity 
and um, they were going to outsource all of the manufacturing over to China, which was, uh, you know, pretty predominant, you mm -hmm. know, thing at the time. And uh, so, you know, somebody was like, hey, you know, I think Sam speaks Chinese. Why don't we bring him, you know, and <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I came in, you know, they were, uh, uh, they were looking to essentially replaced all the, the stuff that I sold the SMC products uh, into a, another product uh, that was a, a competitive product. Um, but, you know, I was able to come in, you know, build rapport with them, you know, being able to, you know, kind of speak Chinese with them, you know, also, you know, background the, the, the culture and everything and, mm -hmm. um, you know, end up, you know, keeping the account for the company, even though, you know, it went over to China. And, uh, you know, kind of did a super millennial thing at the time and, you know, emailed the CEO of the company and basically told him what I did. <laughs> so, That's awesome. You know, uh, and, um, and I, I, my phone rings like five minutes later and they're like, you know, who are you? Right. Right. And, uh, told them, you know, who I was and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, they're like, Hey, you want to go over to China? I was like, yeah, I want to go over to China. <laughs> so That's great. I love so, your initiative. Yeah, so that was like spring of 08. And we started talking about, you know, what my role would be, you know, over there and, uh, you know, where, would, you know, be and all that kind of stuff. And so spring of 08. And then summer of 08, the world fall, falls apart, right? Yeah. Um, you know, financial institutions are falling apart left and right. right. Um, you know, uh, governments having to put a tremendous amount of money into you know, financial institutions, the automakers, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, people are laying off in droves. Um, so, you know, I was able to keep my job, but, you know, I was not going over to China, uh, you know, right. uh, at that time. Um, you know, my company itself, you know, they, they were doing layoffs and things like that. So I, you know, I felt fortunate just to, you know, keep my job at the time. Yeah, I had a lot of friends behind me, you know, at GA that graduated you know, GA a year or two behind me that, you know, trying to get a job in 08, 09, you know, even, you know, 2010 rough. was a, was a rough, you know, rough in Denver. So, um, kind of pivoted, decided to get my, get my MBA. I didn't want to give up my job because, you know, uh, they were hard to come by. So, uh, I went to Drexel, uh, nights and weekends. Um, and, you know, I still did it in two years. Um, you know, I just, remember those days you were working all the time. Yeah. All you did was work. Yeah, no, that was a that was a rough two years. I mean, yeah. but frankly, I, I I really don't have much to complain about. I mean, the people that were in my cohort, the vast majority of them are, you know, basically my age now, you know, with little kids. And I mean, I I couldn't imagine doing what I'm now, doing now, plus going, you know, to you know, a uh, uh, school at night yeah. on the weekends. I mean, it's right. just. You know, was, you know, back then it was just me by myself, <laughs> so right. I was able to, you know, put in hours at that time. So. A little easier to do. Yep. Uh, so after I graduated uh, from Lebo, uh, you know, went to go work, uh, you know, my family's company, uh, just on one side of the business at the time, MDCI, and then in 2015, uh, took over as uh, uh, the president of both uh, both companies. So you don't have the engineering bar background. So you're the sort of business development person in the business, right? Yeah. So I, I you know, I do not have a technical background. I'm not a, you know, engineer. Um, you know, so apologies for the people that are hoping to kind of nerd out on, you know, robotics. And no, not at AI. all. But I think is, <laughs> I think it's interesting that you know someone with business and marketing works in this extremely high tech field. You still have to know about all the technology. You're just not building it necessarily, right? Yeah, I mean, my expertise is you know sales, marketing, business development, right? So that yeah. that's my expertise, which is you know. Um, you know, it's a, a very transitional uh, role. I mean, you know, if this robot thing doesn't work out, you know, uh, you know, I can go sell, you know, whatever. Right. <laughs> right. But based on the robot things that you showed Heather and I before we got on the call, I, I think you're doing well. Um, sorry to, I mean, this is a, this is my favorite slide, the industrial revolution timeline. Yeah. So, I mean, I started my career in a very uh, kind of a, 
looking back at it, a, a very interesting period of time. You know, mm -hmm. when I entered it, it was kind of the end of, you know, industry point uh, 3.0. Mm -hmm. um, and there was not much, um, uh, you know, innovation that was going on, uh, you know, in the business and hadn't been in the business for, you know, a couple of decades. Um, you know, there wasn't much money being thrown at it, you know, uh, manufacturing was going overseas. Right. So, you know, when I, when I got into this, I was like, well, you know, nobody makes anything in the United States anymore. So, <laughs> you know, right. might as well focus over in Asia. Um, but you know, that has completely, you know, turned around, um, oh, that's you know, and a whole bunch of things have happened. I mean, there's been a tremendous amount of reshoring of businesses to the United States and that was going on you know, pre-COVID, um, you know, China and other Southeast Asian con uh, uh, countries, you know, are not as competitive as they, you know, once were. Right. Uh, and on top of that, you know, with the internet and, you know, e-commerce, um, you know, mass production. I, re yeah, I remember as like a kid or even like in college, like your choices on the shelf, you know, at the grocery store or anywhere, where like, do you want this, you know, Procter and Gamble product, or do you want this, you know, Procter and Gamble product, you know, right. or do you want this Johnson Johnson toothpaste or that Johnson? Like, there were, yeah. were the options were, you know, extremely low, and now you have, you know, a tremendous amount of options, right? It, but you know, as a result of that, most of that those options, you know, are you know, uh, made here in the United States, um, and that's you know, great. Yeah, it's a great thing. I mean, it's a wonderful thing. So, you know, one demand has, you know, increased tremendously for, you know, what I do for machines that make product. Um, but there's also been, you know, uh, you know, a lot of innovation, you know, with what's now, you know, the, you know, industry 4.0, you know, with machine learning and artificial intelligence and, you know, cloud computing and big data and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. that, you know, my industry has, you know, started to use as a tool to, you know, make the machines that we do, you know, more intelligent, which just makes the applications that we can go after, you know, more prolific. That's great. So we have two companies. Uh, one is automation distribution. The other one is MDCI automation. You know, one might ask, you know, why the two companies? Um, you know, one is a distribution company, the other one is a manufacturing company. So distribution and manufacturing are two, you know, very different business models. They're different financial models, different levels of, uh, of, of risk. Um, you know, with the distribution business, you know, I buy something for A, you know, I sell it for B. Uh, the manufacturing business, you know, we essentially invent things, you know, we take ABC and a thousand other things, put them together and you know, create a new product. Um, and, uh, you know, we own, you know, essentially what was produced, right? You know, with the distribution business, if I buy something and sell it and, you know, it's got some issues, I go back to the guy that, you know, sold it to me and say, you know, hey, you know, we got a problem here. You know, Are you the, owning all the patents and the IP on the manufacturing side as well? Most of what we do is uh, work for hire. So, you know, companies come to us and say, hey, we have this idea for something and we'll pay you to, you know, design it. So, um, yeah, we have some patents, but, you know, it's that that's not the primary thing that, you know, you know, we're not like a, you know, like a 3M or something like that, that, right. you know, we have a think tank of engineers that, you know, are just, you know, sitting around, you know, developing stuff um, right. for our own purposes. Right. You know, everything that we develop, you know, companies come to us and say, hey, we have a, you know, we have some sort of challenge. Can you help us? That's great. Uh, just real quick, you know, MDCI, you know, every single thing that we do, you know, goes through the same process, right? We research, you know, what's going on. We develop concepts, uh, you know, we develop, a, you know, a specification. We agree on that specification with the customer. We go through a phase one design. There's, you know, do a prototype. There's guaranteed to be, you know, some sort of issues with that, that, you know, things that, you uh, yeah, you know, we didn't know we did, that we didn't know, you know, type mm -hmm. things. Right. You know, then we do a phase two design, then we do a first article. There's always a tremendous amount of documentation in, you know, what we do. 
uh, you know, everything needs to have some sort of, you know, certificate, you know, government certifications, you know, uh, that have to go around it. And then, you know, hopefully it goes into serial production. Do these represent sort of different departments in the company? Like, I could see where you'd have engineers involved in the first, uh, you know, several phases, but by the time you're dealing with documentation and certification, are they attorneys? Are they like, who are, who are the people doing that in the company? Yeah, I mean, good question. I mean, so, uh, so certifications, that's, that's all, you know, that's still all engineering, right? Oh, it is. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. But, you know, from, you know, researching all the, all the way to serial production, I mean, every, everybody from every, you know, department is, in, you know, is involved. Okay. You know, because, um, you know, if, 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 you know, uh, procurement, for example, is not involved in, you know, kind of early on, you know, you might just realize, hey, we're doing all this for naught because, you know, what we're trying to produce, you know, isn't going to create a, you know, an ROI for the customer, right? Right. So, and you know, scare you know so we have to, you know, we have to understand, you know, where our costs are going to be, you know, what our, you know, what the price, you know, uh, is going to look like and, you know, if that's going to fly. Right. One of the things um, uh, we try to talk about when we talk to kids about the future of work is, you know, you can work in the space of robotics and automation, even if you're not an engineer. And I'm just trying to, you know, I'm sure you have people with business degrees, um, sort of legal, like so HR, right? So, you know, company growth is happening in certain sectors. And so even if our students aren't math science whiz kids, but they're really interested in working in technology sector, showing the sort of phases of operation here are really important because I think kids can understand there's different places for them to sort of lock in with different skill sets. Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. You know, I was not, you know, uh, you know, if I was good at sciences, you know, I would, I would become an engineer, you know, I, I wasn't right. I wasn't attracted to it. Um, I wasn't, you know, very good at it. Um, but you're really good at art. And so you're really good at ideas and you're a highly creative thinker. So I do think that's a piece of your success. If I could yeah, just no, interject I, that as one of your teachers. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think that, you know, creativity, not I think creative, creativity is extremely important to, you know, uh, uh, vast aspects of, you know, our, our business from, you know, what we're designing. Um, and, you know, I'm very involved in the design processes of, you know, what we do uh you know to you know marketing um right. and sales and you know um you know uh operations and how we you know tackle you know how we're going to do certain things and how we're going to keep costs low and you know uh you know the list goes on um you know and there's a lot of you know um there's a lot of roles you know within our company that i don't want engineers uh or you know necessarily technical background uh, people, you know, fulfilling those roles. Um, you know, when we, you know, we got into the, the, you know, e-commerce, e uh, business, you know, selling our products online on the distribution business, um, you know, several years ago. And, you know, I needed a kind of a director of e-commerce to come into that, into that role. Um, and I don't typically use headhunters for, you know, filling positions, um, usually because, you know, I, I, you know, have a network of people and I, you know, know the type of people that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. But in this role, I was like, I don't want somebody from this industry, right? Our industry, you know, has done a poor job at e-commerce. So, you know, I mm -hmm. want to find somebody that, you know, has done a good job at, in an industry that, you know, is doing well at this, right? So, you know, I found somebody that, uh, you know, her, her previous role was, you know, she helped uh, develop an e-commerce company for uh, a bridal uh, shop, uh, you know, selling, you know, uh, wedding dresses online. I love uh, that. Yeah. So, you know, it's, uh, yeah. you know, and she's, you know, she, she understands, you know, our products a little bit better, but, you know, it's still, it's still, you know, a lot of it's still foreign to her. Um, but that's not what marketing is about, right? Marketing is about telling a story and, um, you know, it, you know, being, a, you know, an expert in, you know, uh, uh, web, you know, web development, be an expert in, uh, you know, web marketing, uh, those types of things. Sure. Okay, I digressed. You have some cool sh pictures to show our folks on the call. 
Is this yeah, I mean, so these are these are uh, you know a variety of the different projects uh, you know in different in industries that we've tackled. Uh, you know, the one on the top there, you know, is a, a vaccine dispensing system uh, that we developed for a, a major pharmaceutical company. Um, you know, for putting into primary care offices. Uh, oh. You know, the idea was to be able to, uh, you know. Um, uh, make things easier for primary care offices uh, from a administrative uh, standpoint. Um, you know, so it was basically a Coke machine for vaccines. Um, <laughs> the, the one on the right there, uh, that was that was me in a field in December. Uh, you know, in Michigan. Uh, you know, helping with a prototype out there, um, but uh, we developed a product that could. Uh, um, look at temperature and moisture and salinity and nitrogen levels uh, in the ground. And our customer was a finan financial company, a financial institution, if you would. And they wanted to uh, basically gather all of that data so that they could uh, predict uh, corn yields um, and you know, take that data and then sell it to com you know, companies that were betting on corn futures. Wow. Um, the one right below it, that's kind of the uh, uh, 3D CAD uh, shot, um, it was something that we developed for a company in the mushroom industry uh, to uh, uh, harvest mushrooms uh, off a mushroom bed, um, you know, which isn't just, you know, picking every single mushroom on there. I had to, you know, figure out what mushrooms, you know, were good to pick, you know, which ones weren't ready yet, which ones were junk and needed, you know, to get thrown out. Um, you know, the, the next one to the left there, that was uh, something that we did um, for a major logistics company uh, for uh, uh, sorting um, essentially junk mail uh, in the, uh, the letter stream. Um, the way that they were doing it up into that point, you know, was the same way Ben Franklin, you know, was doing it, you know, uh, back in the day, which was, you know, take all your L.A. Bean catalogs and, you know, put them in all the slots and then take all your, uh, you know, whatever catalogs and put them on those slots. And then, you know, that's your, that's your sortation. And then you'd stack them all and your, that's your sequence, uh, you know, for the day. That's you know, crazy. so this was a, you know, multi-billion dollar project, uh, not to us, we're a subcontractor on it uh, that developed, you know, a portion of it. Um, but, you know, a very large automation project. Um, the one to the bottom there, uh, uh, that was uh, a product that we helped develop uh, the mechatronic side of things, uh, but it was for testing for uh, anthrax uh, in the mail after the uh, anthrax attacks after 9-11. Um, we didn't do the science side of things. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Northrop Grumman uh, uh, did all the, that aspect of things, but we helped develop all the uh, automation around it. And then the last one on the left there, uh, you know, is a, um, is a kiosk uh, for um, doing asset tracking in hospitals uh, to, you know, keep track of uh, uh, gowns, you know, so, uh, you know, uh, uh, scrubs essentially. Um, so a doctor comes up, scans their badge, uh, opens up the door, grabs whatever they want out of there, closes the door and automatically, you know, deducts what they took out of there. So, uh, so that my customer uh, who rents the gowns you know, can see, you know, wide inventory across all of their customers, um, you know, um, at, at, you know, in real time. That's great. Yeah, so this is, this is one that we're, that we're doing right now, actually, and that we've been tackling over the last, um, you know, it's probably been two or three years now. Many of these things go fast, you know, it's, uh, you know, it takes yeah. a very long time to do these right. things. Right. Um, and, uh, but, you know, this is, uh, you know, this is a, an application uh, that I ran into, you know, a couple of years ago that, you know, as soon as I took a look at it, I was like, you know, man, that would be a great job for a robot. Um, you know, so you got somebody standing here and, you know, what they do is that you got bulk product coming on the left there and then they're, you know, uh, facing it, right? So need to make sure the barcodes, you know, uh, up and then they're, you know, putting it off to the right, you know, in a, a singularized, you know, uh, fashion. 
Um, but, you know, jobs like this, you know, I mean, these are the types of jobs that we're automating, you know, with robotics, right? It's, uh, you know, even this person that's doing this job right now does not want to be doing this job right now, right? right? right. Um, right. There is better use of, you know, the human mind than, you know, doing these types of these types of tasks. And, you know, usually when people are doing this type of task in a facility, you know, they're trying to figure out how do they, you know, work up their, you know, up the chain you know, in these facilities, um, you know, and, you know, we, we implement robots in these places a lot of times because, you know, people can't even get people to do these, you know, jobs, right? And, you know, the robots, um, you know, they don't, you know, they don't operate completely independently, you know, of anything, right? They have to be maintained, they have to be upgraded, they have to be, you know, so there's a whole level of, you know, jobs that, you know, are getting created on the backside of this, um, you know, uh, to help, you know, service this, you know, entire, right. you know, industry. And it's skilled. Yes. Yep. And are people getting trained particularly on the equipment that you're building? So in these automation systems, do they have training services for people who may not have any skills just to get them up and running with the equipment? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's a lot of, you know, what we work with our customers on are essentially upscaling, you know, their work, their workforce, right? So, you know, instead of being, you know, a, you know, somebody that's, uh, you know, a machine operator or somebody that's doing, you know, a job like this, you know, we're, you know, helping them, you know, uh, train their workforce on how to, you know, maintain the equipment after the fact, right? Yeah, I really love that as a point to make that just the use of automation means that you're creating jobs, not displacing them in lots of instances. And so that's, that's just heartening. Yeah, I mean, in most of the instances that, you know, we're in, you know, we're not, I do people are, you know, maybe like 10 years ago, people were afraid of, job, you know, robots taking their job. I mean, that's not just not the case anymore. You know, pe people just do not want to be doing these types of jobs anymore, you know, which is, um, you know, which is fueling what I do, but it's also fueling, you know, the increases in, you know, <laughs> avocado prices, right? <laughs> you know, yeah, right, you can't get anybody right. to, you know, pick, pick the fruit in the field, <laughs> right. you know, it's, uh, you're gonna have to pay more for the people that are doing it. Right. Um, and you know, that just goes into the cost of, you know, the, the products that you buy. Um, so this is just a, quick video of, you know, what we did from a, you know, automation perspective to uh, automate that, you know, at, that, at, that uh, operation that I was just showing you. Um, you know, so on the left, you got the simulation and then the right, you got the, the real thing in the, in the field. Um, you know, and what this is doing. So th this, this application was not doable, you know, 10 years ago. Um, and, you know, the, the robot hasn't changed, you know, everything around the robot hasn't changed, you know, but from, uh, from a system standpoint, um, you know, basically you got, you know, you got the arm, you got the, the hand, right. That, that hasn't changed, you know, what's changed is, you know, essentially the brain and the, and the eyes, you know, so what the, what this is using is 3d AI, AI vision which essentially takes a two, 2D snapshot. So, you know, think like, you know, a 2D camera, right? Looking on a television, that's 2D. And then it takes a 3D point cloud um, so that, uh, you know, think of that thing that we had as a kid that has like all the needles that you put your hand under or you put your face under and it, you know, kind of shows. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah so, I know. You know, that's basically what a 3D point cloud, you know, looks like. And... You know, it takes the 2D snapshot and 3D image and, you know, it can tell the robot, hey, this is how you pick it. And then it, you know, uses AI on top of that to get better over time at picking products. Um, but, you know, a lot of this was around, you know, 10 years ago from a, from a mechanical standpoint, but mm -hmm. from a software standpoint, this was not doable, you know, just 10 years ago or just five years ago. Yeah, so we have a lot of students interested in computer science, and we founded a comp sci program at school a while back. There's coding that happens now, K-12. Um, so, you know, it is a language, I think, that as we develop more inroads in terms of teaching it, you know, that, that workforce is going to be able to make more of those kinds of applications to machines. 
Yeah, I mean, from a from a from a technical standpoint, you know, there's enormous opportunity for you know uh, people going into that you know field, um, and that's not gonna that's not gonna slow down that anytime soon. You know, so what's fueling uh, growth in automation? You know, manufacturers reshoring. Uh, you know, the workforce is uh, is shrinking either you know from retirement or you know lack of interest in these in these uh, roles. And then the cost of automation has been steadily decri declining as you know the cost of labor is increasing. So you know the demand for automation and robotics, uh, you know, is just going to continue, uh, you know, to rise, uh, you know, for these reasons. Um, and that demand is just creating more acceleration in new technology uh, that's faster, more flexible, and you know, less expensive. Um, you know, so the trends that, you know, I see in this business, you know, it's just going to be more robots, um, you know, 2021 was the first year that non-automotive uh, applications uh, were higher than automotive applications for the first time ever. That's um, incredible. Yeah. I mean, you go into like an auto plant, no people, right? It's just right. robots, 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 right? Um you know, and that's been going on since the 70s, um, you know, so they have decades and decades of experience, you know, to the point that, you know, you know, cars aren't, you know, cars are glued together, essentially, uh, you know, these days. Um, wow. And, you know, um, you know, cars are designed in a way that, you know, they can be put together by robots, right? Most products are not, right? So, you know, when people call us in to say, hey, I want to, you know, put a robot in here, it's not as simple as just putting a robot in there, right? Like we have to, they have to look at their products. In many cases, they have to redesign their products to be, you know, made, you know, with machinery and not right. just, you know, the way that they've been doing all along, right? right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, you know, you, you go into the, a lot of these places, you know, go, you go into warehouses, distribution centers, which is where we're focusing a lot of our time these days. They're, you're, you're not overwhelmed by the number of robots in these facilities. Um, you know, so it is, it is literally just the beginning, you know, right. in these places. Right. Um, you know, other places that, you know, we're, we're going to see a lot more service industries. So healthcare, ho hotels, you know, at home. Uh, industrial agriculture. I mean, that is a huge booming area for automation right now. Um, you know, we, you know, basically we solved that problem with immigration over the last, you know, uh, several decades. Um, that's over, um, you know, and, you know, it's going to have to, you know, be fixed with, with automation if we're not going to fix it with, you know, uh, with immigration. Um, other trends, you know, AI assisted programming, uh, 3D AI vision, uh, autonomous uh, mobile robots and autonomous vehicles, and then, you know, obviously 3D printing. And there's so many ways that our students can enter in any of these categories of work, you know, and prepare for them, these specialties. So that's good for them to know as well as they, you know, we, we think about engineering as I'm just going to do engineering or I'm just going to do computer science. But the truth of the matter is there's so many sort of subcategories in those two larger categories and knowing that this is, that automation is only set to grow and that these are parts of the specific skill sets required to land that just allows them to kind of tack their interest into particular categories, which I think is really great for you to have broken down this way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as a, as a non-technical person, you know, in this industry, um, one, you know, I think that coming into this field, not being an engineer, you know, uh, you know, provides me with a lot of value, uh, you know, to these conversations, you know, um, and, you know, uh, on top of that, um, you know, you, you, you do not need to be, you know, extremely technical or incredibly great in the sciences, you know, to, you know, work in this field, right? You know, this field needs people that can, you know, market these things, that can, you know, sell these things, um, you know, and you have to be about this deep, you know, in, you know, some, some areas uh, to work in this field, you know, um, obviously, you know, we, we know a lot of engineers too, um, 
you know, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, right. it's not, not purely a business just for engineers. That's great. So Sam, is this your last slide? Yeah, that's it. Sorry. Oh, okay. I, I, I was so, going to throw it the end slide, but you know. Okay. So, um, a couple questions. We may have some students who are interested in connecting with you if they have some follow-up questions. Sure. Um, would it be okay if we will just share your email with them? Yep. Um, so if you had to give a piece of advice, it's like a way we close a lot of these webinars. If you had to give a piece of advice to the students sitting where you were, you know, what is it, 18 years ago now? Mm -hmm. Long time, 03, 13, yeah. Oh, 20 years ago, Sam. Um, <laughs> you, you're you're officially old, my friend. I know. Um, I still remember you as like a freshman in photography. You were so talented, but um, younger, much younger. If you had to give a piece of advice to a student sitting in your in a seat at GA today, what's the one thing you would tell them? From what standpoint, Gabby? You got to be a little bit more. Well, from uh, the standpoint of what we've just been talking about, right? There's a lot of things you could tell them. <laughs> 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 a little bit more specific. I'm, I'm fine with okay. open ended. Okay, let me but... let me phrase it this way. Let me phrase it this way. Would you have done anything differently in your own sort of education trajectory to prepare differently for this work, or do you feel like uh, there are lessons to be learned the whole way through? Yeah, no, I'm I'm very I'm very happy with the you know the way that I got here. Um, you know, I think that uh, you know you have to you have to roll with the punches. You know, I think that you know. I think my career, uh, not just career, but, you know, GA on, um, you know, there was a lot of pivoting, you know, that was required, um, mm -hmm. even in business now you have to, you know, you know, there's pivoting that happens, right. You know, you know, you can have a game plan, but, uh, you know, in many cases, you know, you have to be able to be flexible. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so I think that's, I think that's one, you know, big thing, um, not being discouraged by those things, you know, uh, you know, and being able to, you know, move on and get through, you know, uh, uh, failures and, um, you know, uh, I don't want to call it difficult times, but, you know, you're going to have plenty of uh, setbacks and you just have to, you know, keep plowing forward. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'd probably say is the biggest, uh, you know, maybe the biggest one. That's awesome. You learned that lesson a lot in the pool, I'm sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I mean, I you know, I get a tremendous you know education at GA just from a, a um, from a you know educational standpoint, but um, but also you know with with all the sports, um, you know, was uh, was pr tremendously useful in my life. Yeah, really teaches you how to compete in a healthy way. Sam, this was so interesting. I mean, it's a lot to take in. I love that you spent the time putting together such rich slides. Um, I just, Heather, do we have anything to announce for tomorrow? I just want, no, I wanted to actually read uh, Mark Steffen's uh, comment. I'm, I'm guessing Mark. you and Mark know each other well. Oh, I didn't see it come this. in. Uh, great presentation, Sam. Keep up the robot revolution. <laughs> you guys have a great company. Your father would be very proud of you. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Mark. He would indeed. Um, Yep. All right. That's a beautiful sentiment to end on. Sam, thanks so much for your time tonight. Everybody at home listening, thank you for tuning in all week. Heather and I love doing these. And remember, just go on to GA's YouTube channel and you'll see Sam's webinar along with everyone else's from the earlier part of the week posted uh, probably just in a day or so. Um, and I guess like, we'll see you next year when we do this again. Sam, thanks again. Have a great night. Get home to those kiddos. Heather, thanks, thanks for everything. We'll Take talk care. soon.